energy is an essential element of all components of life, whether you're talking about the private experience, the personal experience, the social or the professional experience. All four of those areas require energy and some of them an immense amount of energy. And many times we need energy over and over and over again. We start the day we need energy, we finish the day we need energy, it's everywhere in between. As we talk about the private and the personal experiences, one of the things that is most important in that is the process of decision making. Decision making is quite heavily influenced by the amount of energy that we have. And the adverse of energy, right, is fatigue. So when we're feeling fatigue, we don't necessarily make the best decisions. When we're hungry, we don't necessarily make the best decisions. When we lack sleep, we don't necessarily make the best decisions. When we put those things together, it's a perfect storm. We have to have energy in order to make the, the private experience, the personal experience, the two most important areas of our lives work. And when those areas work well, then the social and the professional experiences also work well. Now in our social area, this is the area that when we have the fatigue, when we don't have the energy that we want, the social area is the one that tends to suffer first. We let those things go. And many of those decisions that we make on the social area, those are the right decisions. It is the right thing to just let them go and move on to something different. And then we have the professional area. Exceptional performance requires energy and a lot of it, and a lot of it with consistency. With the understanding that you and I really require a lot of energy, and for our life experience to be the best that it can possibly be, that we have to have energy and we have to have it consistently and we have to have it in many different ways. Let's pop inside the studio and I'm gonna go through how to, how to really manage energy in your life in specific ways so that you can have the best experience that you possibly can. From a categorical perspective, diet and lifestyle are the elements that we're going to most address when we talk about energy. You wanna have the most natural energy that you possibly can with the most consistency, right? That's what it's all about. And these are the two things that will best address that. So we're gonna jump into diet first and take a look at what is that really all about. So first of all, why do you eat? Secondly, why do we crave certain things? And third, how do we make healthy eating a little bit easier? Now, so often we can get so caught up in, in this diet thing that we can become fanatical about it. And what I find is that when people become fanatical about diet is when they tend to not stay with it. And that's gonna be more harmful to you than anything. So it's really important that we be real when we approach the concept of diet. So let's think about why we eat for just a moment. We eat to sustain life. Now, sustaining life controls weight, it impacts mood, it combats disease, it impacts energy, and impacts longevity. Those are the reasons that we eat, right? So what's important is then, what do we eat? Everybody has cravings. They have a dynamic contrast to what's going into your body. So in other words, they're going to give you sweet and sugar. That is a dynamic contrast. And there's many of these types of things that happen consistently. Now, food makers, people who actually make the foods and distribute them, they often, they understand the science of, of cravings very, very well, and they want to satisfy your cravings because that satisfies their business need. So they do these things intentionally. We find that craving types of foods tend to create a salivary response. They're rapid food meltdown. You put it in your mouth and it just rapidly melts down and you just love it. It's just so great. Like chocolate, you close in your mouth. Oh, and you think about it, you think about um, certain types of chocolate just melt in your mouth type of thing. Yeah, that's not an accident. Um, sensory specific responses that we have to them, they're very calorically dense and get into our memory patterns so that we want to go back to them, right? All of these things happen with cravings. So what we have to do is just recognize, and that's all I'm doing this for, is to help you recognize this is part of the process of the foods that we tend to crave, okay? Not that it's going to help you a whole lot other than to initially recognize, okay, yep, if this is part of it, then I know what to be on guard for. Now, when we eat with health in mind, 
We're going to create a healthy eating environment. We're going to avoid certain things. We're going to increase our fruits and veggies, and we're going to limit the amount of sugars that we have. Easier said than done, but these are really the basic four things that we want to do. Eating in a healthy environment simply means take out of the path anything that's not healthy. If you want something unhealthy, you have to work for it. It's like me taking out of the path the ability to have ice cream as I want it, when I want it, wherever I want it. If I want it, I have to go get it. <laughs> and that makes it a little bit harder to just have it, right? As we make fruits and vegetables more readily available, then we're more likely to actually consume those on a regular basis. Okay, make sense? Yeah. Now let's move into the exercise component of this. So just healthy eating, that's one great step. It's not the only step. We also have to be a little bit more healthy in the exercise that we do. We want the benefits of exercise. They increase and improve energy first and foremost. That's what we're after and has other health benefits that are all related to what it is that we do, the brain power that we have, um, less stress and fatigue. These are all things that when we exercise with consistency, we're going to improve these things. But again, first and foremost, what are we focused on? We're focused on energy. Now the types of exercise, cardiovascular strength, balance, and flexibility. We should be doing each of these four things in some proportion. Now it depends on what it is that you're trying to get out of the exercise that you're doing as to what you're going to put into it. But we do want to have some type of resistance, some type of cardio, some type of flexibility, and some type of balance built into our daily routines. Age also is a factor here. So the older you are, the more you want to put these things in. The younger you are, the more you want to put these things in, but don't neglect this one. And as you age, don't neglect this one. Now, if you're an athlete, a little bit different configuration with this, but that's not the purpose of this particular podcast. So we'll move on from there. The, there are a variety of different ways that we can get that exercise today. There are things that you can look up to do at home. And then there are many things that you can now do at home that we didn't have the opportunity to do before. And then there, of course, there are gyms and and just exercising regularly as we, as we have in the past. Now, moving on to sleep. Sleep is incredibly important. It will help your memory, helps your heart, helps decision-making, makes you healthy, supports weight loss, and increases creativity. All things that we need, right? To create the best experience that we possibly can, we want to have those things happening to us. So what is it that we need to do? Best, get rid of the cell phone. Don't keep it with you in the same room in which you sleep. Why? Because you'll be too tempted to look at it and that will interrupt patterns. In fact, the waves that are given from a pattern have been shown to interrupt uh, or delay sleep from even happening. You may find relaxing music helpful. Um, limit, <coughs> limit or eliminate alcohol. Read a book, turn off the lights, make it as dark as possible with consistency. Um, you may want to take a bath or find some way to relax, but one of the most important factors of sleep is sleep regimen. That means going to bed the same time every night if possible, but more importantly, getting up the same time every day or around the same time every day. That, if you're trying to regulate sleep, that can be one of the most important factors of getting healthy sleep. It's also difficult to do. so. You have to work at that, but once you get the habit, it'll actually work out well. Now, these are the things that when we, when we do these three things, focus on what we bring into our body, food, right? Focus on what we do with our body, exercise, and then focus on how we rest our body, crit critically important. Those three things combined are what are gonna provide us the energy so that we can have and create the best experience possible. Thank you so much for being with me on the Primacy Podcast. Always, I appreciate it. Share it with others that you think will benefit. I'll see you next time. Take care.